that she wanted to talk to me about Moscone Cup. I almost dropped my phone when I received that. So, of course, I was very excited. And, yeah, that was great. Great news, especially after this, yeah. I guess they, I grabbed their attention when I received such a red card from the um, doing the European Championship lately from the referees which was <laughs> like a little scandal but anyhow is it, uh, it looks like it helped a little bit here yeah and when she spoke to you about it was it a case of talking to you about the possibility of it or did she straight out offer you the job just the possibility of course so <laughs> we, we we were going a little bit back and forth you know and before she finally made a decision it was still an open case before she announced it during the european open so quite a thrilling time for me as well so and here we got the match Yep, JDL versus KPC. And this is in the last 32 now, so whoever wins this match will be back tomorrow for the final 16. And it's going to be Ko Ping Chung, who was a semi-finalist here last year, one rack away from a place in the final to start us off. I wonder how many viewers we're going to have here from Asia. It's about 4 o'clock in the morning, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think it's going to stop them, though. It's an all-night culture there, and <laughs> they just can't get enough of pool over there. And of course, we'll be on our way to Vietnam week after next for the Hanoi Open. It starts off with a dry break. Yeah, I guess he missed that one ball in the side pocket a little bit, a little bit long. Here you see he catched the corner of that, so... Maybe he's going to add a little bit more draw on the cue ball on the, his next attempt to get this one ball right in the middle. And let's see what Jerry De Luna, if he's going for this combination here on the five ball, one five combination. It's pretty risky though. And it's hard to keep position for the one ball when you go for that combination, isn't it? Yeah, he was born on Valentine's Day, 1984, which means he's 39 years of age. He's been a well-established player for some time, won a silver medal in the Asian Games, which is a very big deal for players from that part of the world, as long ago as 2006. So it was too much of a risk to go for that combination, and so he decided to play a safety here. Pretty nice, but it, I guess it uh, won't force Ko Ping Chung to make a foul here. I guess he's going for his jump cue. And this looks like a jump bank shot maybe. Maybe a little attempt to go into the side pocket with it. Because the two ball, where the two ball is sitting, it uh, offers a pretty good chance to continue from there in case he's going to make that jump bank, which is <laughs> certainly not a high percentage shot. But what else to do here? It, yeah, he tried to uh, not to bank it, jumping into it for the safety here to keep the cue ball down the lower part of the table and sending the one ball up down on the other half of the table. Still left the shot for Jeffrey. So when Alex Laley declared that he was stepping down after a very successful stint as European captain, Ralph, all sorts of names got floated around and mm -hmm. nobody really seemed to be quite the right fit. And then it emerged, as you say, during the European Open, that you had got the job. Now, you've been around the scene for a very long time, very well respected in the game. So tell people who might not have been around that long what your background is. Okay, <laughs> if you speak about my background, then, yeah, I started in 1982 to play the game. And... Uh, I got, and from there I made my way to the top in Germany, but I was always standing in the shadow of the big names like Ralph Suke and Oliver Ortman. So I had to find something else than just tournaments. So I started to write books. I, I guess I s finished my ninth book. Uh, I will finish that pretty soon. The first one came out in 95 and I was pretty deep into trick shots. I did a lot of trick shows and now I'm pretty successful with uh, some trick shots posting on Instagram. And uh, 
And yes, in trainings, if you talk about trainings, I coach a lot of national teams. I worked with a lot of national teams from the latest one was the Maldives, also Germany, of course, actually now Germany, and um, but also exotic countries like Morocco, Thailand, Hong Kong, Singapore, Turkey, also European ones like Switzerland, Denmark. So that's my background. Yeah, it's very impressive. And in a sense, it's quite similar really to Jeremy. I know he's obviously been a US Open winner and has played in Moscones, but he's very well respected in teaching as well. So it's uh, two captains who both have a massive reputation in that regard. I heard a lot of times the questions, how would be the outcome if I play Jeremy a race to <laughs> something? In well, listen, that can be arranged. <laughs> <laughs> I'd okay. love to see that match. <laughs> Jeff DeLuna pulled out a good pot to get in. Has a chance here to take this opening rack. But what's it been like? Because when you got the job, it wasn't really that far away from the Moscone Cup happening because it's only 10 weeks away at this stage. So what have you been doing for the last few weeks to get your preparations underway for December? Well, I try to go back into the scene. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm also attending at the Asian Open. So uh, I want to be close to the players. I want to see all the details you maybe can't see on television. And I want to be approachable for the players, to talk with them, being in touch with them and seeing, yeah, is, uh, that's the main thing, right? Because the main thing, but the main thing starts after, of course, picking my uh, making my picks after the Asian Open but uh, the main thing is to make out of opponents they are opponents the whole year right playing each other and fighting for points and prize money but for one week we have to create team out of them and this is the main target when it's about the Moscone Cup and I guess having been involved with running teams at various levels over the years in the game You've got your own methods of doing that and presumably you'll be using those methods to try to create that bond within the European team. Mm -hmm. and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, we know, is definitely going to be on that team. He's already qualified. In a match where he was one ball away from going 8-2 down, he's now got a chance to lead 9-8 against Mickey Krause, who just raced away into a big lead at the start of the match. And it's all turned around now. FSR, the defending champion here. Well, he was far behind in this set, and now... Bang! And on the hill at 9-8. And the winner of that match will play Daniel Masiol of Poland, who's beaten Wu Kun Lin within the last few minutes by 10 racks to 8. Emil Andre Gangflo is 6 3 up on Honus Suto Camino, has just gone 6 4 actually. Miguel Silva of Portugal, who's having a really good 2023, 7 4 up on Jovan Bustamante. Victor Zolinski is on the hill now, leading 9 8 against Winan Tan. Chang Yung Lin, well, he was leading Shane Van Boning 3 2. The next rack has just been completed. I'll tell you in a moment once I know who won it. Oh, well, it's gone 3 all now. So SVB has won a couple in a row there. David Alcady, European Open winner in your home country, Ralph, just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Very comfortable. 8-2 up now against BJ Ussery. So they're all in the last 64. In the last 32, a few matches underway. Alexa Peixelge and Pong Nam Pan are level at one all. And Oscar Dominguez has taken the first rack against Max Lechner. Mario He and Oliver Shonoki level at two all. You just missed that very nice uh, jump shot from Jeffrey De Luna with this safety, resulting in that safety here. It was very impressive because the distance to the ball he had to jump over was uh, about ball size only. And then this kind of precision, awesome. Jeffrey De Luna. But let's see, he is attempting also a jump shot here, long distance. But if he catches it pretty full, he can leave the cue ball basically in the lower area of the table by while sending up the four ball in the upper area. Like that. So the only thing he left is this very, very far away difficult shot. 
Was the captaincy of the European Moscone Cup team something you'd had your eye on, or did this come out of the blue entirely for you? Oh, it came a little bit out of the blue. I was trying uh, or hoping uh, several years before, but suddenly it came up like that. It was a surprise, a very pleasant surprise. Very tough conditions to try such a long shot here, especially with this kind of speed. So he was really trying to make it and get the position. There was no escape shot, like shooting it a little bit harder in case of missing it, you know. Well, it's turned out it may just end up costing them the opening rack. Coping Chung, as I said, got to within one rack of the semi-finals here last year. Beat so many good players along the way. David Alcady, Niels Fyan, Eklund Kachi. They were all among them, and they just went down 11-10 to Max Lechner. Yeah, all three co-brothers were in action here at the US Open. And here we got uh, the last co-brother standing, or is there anyone else left in the field? Well, he's really taken over now as the leader of the co-brothers in the last few months, certainly in terms of the world rankings. Ko Pinyi had that great win earlier in the year at the World Masters. The coping Chung has actually now moved ahead of his brother into the top ten of the world rankings. Coping Yi uh, went out earlier today, 10-9 against Pong Nam Pam in the last 64. Looks like a pretty comfortable walk now to get the first game here in that match. Ko Ping Chung from Taiwan. Yeah, DeLuna went for a risky shot. Left the chance for Ko Ping Chung. He had a bit of work to do in potting his first ball to get position. But having done that, it's been fairly straightforward. And as a result, Ko Ping Chung it's going to lead Jeff DeLuna here in the last 32 of the US Open by one rack to nil. Let's have a look in again on the defending champion, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, who now leads for the first time in the match against Mickey Kraus at nine racks to eight. And he's at the table. So FSR, the only player who's guaranteed his place in your team at this stage, Ralph, have you spoken to him this week? Yes, we spoke a little bit, but uh, the main... Mainly we spoke already at the European Open and, well, it uh, makes me feel a little bit more calm having a good player like him on the team already secured. So let's see if he can really win that match here after being down like 5 nothing, if I remember right. And now leading 9-8 over Mickey Krause. Under. So we are, but here we are back at our main table with the break from Ko Ping Chung. Let's check out his break. How does it work? How does it work with the one ball and the two ball? and the cue ball. Those are the main things for the players having in mind. And here we go. Very nice workmanship on the one ball and keeping the cue ball also in the lower half of the table where he probably expected also the two ball to be ending up. And it looks like the two ball can pass the three, can pass the uh, eight ball over there. And here he is checking how far he likes to follow the cue ball with to get a acceptable position on the three ball. Meanwhile, FSR at the table and on the hill over on table four. It doesn't look like a like an easy task here, even though it's only four balls left for FSR. While Koping Chung is yeah. Pretty close to that eight ball, almost straight on the three. So he has to draw that back a little bit. 
And FSR misses. Yeah, so it's back in the balance. A chance maybe for Mickey Krause to pull this one out and find himself breaking in the last rack. So we'll keep a close eye on that one. Ko Ping Chung, meanwhile, at the table here, looking to go 2-0 in front. 28 years of age. Been around for such a long time. He was only 15 when he got to the final of the All Japan Championship. Beaten by Torsten Homan. Been in the World Championship semi-finals a couple of times. And Mickey Krause would be also his uh, yeah biggest success so far in the US Open. Yeah. If he's if he's going to win that. Well, if he can win this match, it would be pretty much the biggest result he's ever had. Not so happy with that position. It's a great job to have, isn't it? Leading this European team with all the talent and all the success they've had. But you're going to have a really, really tough job. When you know who your three automatic picks are, you're going to have so many players to choose from who have really good claims to be on that team. It's going to be tough. Nice problem to have, though. Yeah, it's a luxury problem, isn't it? <laughs> but I don't uh, think too much about it because I just... I certainly have to wait until the Asian Open because I have to know who are the three spots and then I can have a look who is still left, who is still available, who is still a nice supplement to build a team out of those five players. A nice jump shot here from Mickey Krause. Well, it doesn't look like he's been thrown too much by the way this match has turned around. And when it comes to picking your two wild cards for the European team, Ralph, is that something you'll do on your own or will there be people you want to consult with? Will you speak to the players who've already qualified? Yeah, I'm going to speak to them, that's pretty much sure. Because I have to make sure that uh, we create a real team and not that I accidentally pick a kind of a personal enemy from someone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen a few situations like that on Ryder Cup teams over the years. And Mickey Krause has potted that ace. Meanwhile, back here, Ko Ping Chung winning the second rack much more cleanly than he did the first. So 2-0 um, up already. And then Mickey is making this nine ball. It's 9-9, nine -nine, isn't it? Yep, this is to take us hill hill. Oh, what is. a match and what a story that's turning into. Meanwhile, look at Shane. The, look at oh, the cue ball. Look the at cue ball. Oh. <laughs> oh my. Well, we saw that earlier on, uh, Chris Reinholds potting the nine for the match, but scratching at the same time. He did manage to get in then and clinch it soon after that. Mm -hmm. And uh, over on table two, Shane Van Boning, 4-3 down against Chang Young Lin. And he's at the table with a good chance to level it at four all. So you're well known for teaching and coaching and instruction and all the rest of it. Will you bring any of that into it? Will you work on specific things with the players? Or is it a case that they're so well established and so good that you're going to leave them do their own thing in that regard? Oh, I guess technically I can leave them uh, because they are pros, they're the best in the world. There's not much I can teach them though. I'm, I'm available, of course, if something uh, comes up or if there's something special they are curious of. But uh, you can make it maybe mandatory to have a trick shot in every set, then I would be available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd love that. <laughs> But I guess that's the thing you're talking there about if something comes up. So if there's a player on the team who's maybe struggling with, say, jump shots or the break or with any particular aspect, it's great that they'll have someone they can go to for a little bit of coaching work, a little bit of discussion and advice, and you'll really come into your own in that regard. Should that be the way it goes? Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, even though I'm not in, in competition anymore, but uh, also from trick shots, I know a lot about jump shots right or any kind of exotic shots so and the break we figured out of course this is the topic in every national team nowadays right to figure that out and finding training methods to get better at it to beat the percentages or making the percentages work for yourself i already mentioned something right you have to uh, be you have to keep the control over the one ball, but not only the one ball. If you got the control over the one ball, the better your percentages are to uh, have a shot to to make the one ball. Then 
The next step is to looking at the two ball. And wherever the two ball is placed in the racket, there are seven positions available. You have to have an idea where this two ball usually goes and where would be the best position for your cue ball to go. And you can maneuver the cue ball of course also, even though it's a cut break and it usually looks that the cue ball always goes towards the middle diamond. Those players have the sensitiveness or the, they can make the difference being a little bit upper of the middle diamond or a little bit lower of the middle diamond and this makes the difference already. And that combined of course with the what kind of how much draw, how much follow or how much stun you put into the cue ball during the break. You have to balance that out. This requires, well, thousands of breaks in training, right, to build out this sensitiveness. Meanwhile, back here, Ko Ping Chung is up against someone from the Philippines and it was in that country that he had a big win quite recently. In the Sharks International Nine Ball Open in Quezon City and that's the primary reason why he is now in the top ten of the world rankings. A lot of points and prize money were on offer there. And off to a fine start in this match with a chance to lead 3-0. I'm sure you know the Ryder Cup is on this week and that obviously is the event in which the Moscone Cup was originally modelled. And I heard someone saying that a big part of being a Ryder Cup captain is managing people's expectations. Now obviously that's particularly relevant for you because Europe, having won 11 of the last 13 now, go in as very, very big favourites. So is that a part of what you need to do and play down expectations and play down that favourites tag that's going to be there? Well, certainly, but that's also something what the players already know because they are pros. It's not so much that you concentrate on the outcome, on the result. You concentrate on your job. You concentrate on putting the quality into every step what you are doing, actually, because then the positive result is only a logical consequence out of the quality you put into your game. So concentrating on results, on winning, is <laughs> it gives you motivation, but it won't help you in the actual situation. Yeah, the expression that's often used in sport is concentrate on the process. And that seems to be the uh, approach that you're advocating there. Meanwhile, Ho Ping Chung is absolutely flying here at the start of this match. Yeah, while we are talking and talking, he's doing his job very smoothly. And he now leads by three racks to nil against Jeff DeLuna, who was a semi-finalist in this US Open back in 2019 in Las Vegas. Now, where are we going? I believe we're going to be going to one of the other tables for a moment. Yeah, it is table four. And this is the final rack between Francisco Sanchez Ruiz and Mickey Krause. Well, he's going to be the most relieved man in Atlantic City if he can somehow win this one, having had such a big lead and having then seen it overturned. And when we watch this, let's look at some of the other scores in this round. Emil Andre Gangflo, 7-4 up on Honus Suto Camino. Miguel Silva leads Jovan Bustamante, 7-5. Four all between Shane Van Bonin and Chang Young Lin on table two. And Victor Zolinski has won 10-8 against Winan Tan. And will now play the winner of that match between Chang Young Lin and Shane Van Boning. So all those matches I was talking about were in the last 64. In the last 32, Pong Nam Pam leads Alexa Peixels 2-1. Max Lechner and Oscar Dominguez level at one all. Oliver Shonoki with a 3-2 lead over Mario He and Alusius Yap, the runner-up here two years ago, has won the opening rack against Marco Teutcher. Tell us about Ko Ping Chung's break there, Ralph. He, again, it was the one ball in, uh, he sent a one ball at the upper edge of the side pocket. And so nothing else went in. And so it's now Jeffrey De Luna's part now, what to do out of that, because the one ball cannot pass the three ball, obviously. So is he going to play a push, maybe? You can you can cut it on the right side, but I'm doubting if he's trying to make the real cut bank shot here in the other corner. This would be something more to push at or leave this option to your opponent. 
Meanwhile, Mickey Krause with the safety on the three ball. It's hard to tell from this angle exactly how that's finished, but it doesn't look too bad anyway. Mm, looks like a jump shot is required, doesn't it? Yeah, certainly seems to be from that angle. Just when you're looking at it from there, it can be a little bit deceptive, but we'll find out in a moment. Back so here, the push out. Jeff is doing the push, yeah. Pushing it a little bit further, so make it very tempting for Ko Peng Jung maybe to go for this cross bank, which I still doubt that he's going for it, because there's also this combination. You can maybe try to attempt here by shooting the one ball into the long rail and coming out from there into the three. Still pretty risky. Uh, it wouldn't make me wonder if he gives it back. Meanwhile, FSR sizing it up. Looking to see if he does indeed need to play a jump shot. He's going up, he's going down. He's not sure yet what to do with this shot. Ping Chung and Mickey is still working on that three ball here. Oh, it's FSR. Yeah, it's does. Fran at the FSR table. Yeah. Is. yeah, looks like a jump shot he has to go for. A jump combination, even. And we certainly won't be seeing anyone taking this long over a shot from tomorrow because the shot clock will come into play. 30 seconds a shot with one extension allowed per player in each rack. And well, Shane Van Bonin on table two. Looks like he's about to pot the eight and the nine. Well, he's left the nine harder than he would have intended to. Looking to go 5-4 up on Chang Yun Lin. This must be about three minutes now, at least, that Sanchez Ruiz has taken over this shot. Well, they enjoy. They're having a good time, right? It's it all adds to thing. the drama. It's good <laughs> stuff. Well, he's played it. He did play the jump shot. Seemed to go quite close to the pocket. Is it going to go in the other one? Oh, oh that is going to hurt Mickey Krauts for a long, long time to come if he loses this match. <laughs> what a shot. I always say, you know, the better the players are, the less is the luck factor. But if there's still a little bit of luck left, then, then it can be decision-making, right? Absolutely, doesn't do you any harm. And looking at the way the balls are sitting now, you'd have to fancy Sanchez Ruiz to finish it from there. Having been so far behind earlier on in the match. We're going to keep an eye on that, of course, because whatever happens now, it's a big story. It's either the defending champion and world number one going out or it's the completion of a wonderful turnaround 7-2 down he was and well back on the match well, we're focusing on Jeff DeLuna he got now the full control that's for sure so only a real big mistake is needed to bring Mickey Krause back to the table and you can won't expect that from from FSR but you never know especially on this tough equipment we got here at the US Open and he'll regard this as one of the finest turnarounds of his career if he completes it Shane Van Bonin has gone 5-4 up on Chang Young Lin Jeff DeLuna still looking to get off the mark 3-0 down against Ko Ping Chung and We'll return our full focus to that in a moment, but I'm sure you can understand. Yeah. Just Maybe imagine. Keeping an eye on table four. Sorry, Ralph, go ahead. Just imagine if you have a straight-in shot like this, but long-distance shot in front of you as a decision-maker. This is not easy. Even though it looks easy if he's making Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. Well, you called it correctly there. And it looks as though he's going to get the job done and get into the last 32 where he will play Daniel Massiol later today. All right. Do 
They yeah. crack, uh, catch a lot of crowd over there, FSR and Mickey Krause. Yeah, they're in the absolute far corner from our commentary position here, but it seems they're moving away, so I think we can assume, even though we lost the pictures there, that Sanchez Ruiz has got the job done. Mickey Krause is going to really struggle to put that behind him now and move on with subsequent tournaments. He'd already been heavily beaten by FSR earlier in the tournament. Was that the case, yeah? Yeah, they'd met in an earlier round. Mm -hmm. And Krauss clean through on the loser's side. So back here, Jeff DeLuna. Yeah, let's have a look here. So Koping Chung leading 3 nothing, and this is an important game, of course, for Jeffrey to keep, keep the distance small. And he got the full control here. Yeah, so this should bring us back to 3 1. With this angle, he might it might force the cue ball to run into the nine. But if he, if he has enough draw on it, it shouldn't it shouldn't bother him too much. And and maybe he can even prevent with a lot of with good quality draw to prevent to run into the nine. Can he? It shouldn't hurt too much. was even trying to run hard into it because he saw this possibility of Kerm into the nine. Look at that, how close this was. So Jeff DeLuna of the Philippines should stem the tide here. Ko Ping Chung started off so well. Had the dry break though. And DeLuna ended up carving out the rack to close to 3-1. So just three matches left to be completed now in the round prior to this, the last 64. Emil Andre Gangflo, the young Norwegian player, leads Honus Suto Camino of Spain, 7-4. Portugal's Miguel Silva, 7-5 up on Jovan Bustamante. And Shane Van Boning leads Chang Young Lin, 5-4. In the last 32, it's two all now between Alexa Peixelj and Pong Nam Pam. And the same score in the meeting of Oscar Dominguez of the United States. And last year's beaten US Open finalist Max Lechner. Also level are Mario He and Oliver Shulnoki at 3 all, and it's 1 all between Alusius Yap and Marco Teutcher. So we'd just like you to stay with us for uh, maybe one more rack, Ralph, and a few more questions about the Moscone. And that Alexandra Palace atmosphere, it's so special, it's going to be really quite something. And some people really get wrapped up in it and they're jumping around the place shouting, and others just maintain more of a calm presence. So what do you think you'll be like when you find yourself in that atmosphere in a couple of months' time? Pretty much the calm presence. I would have thought so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you'll let yourself go when the winning ball goes down, if it's in Europe's favour, and we might see a big celebration then. Well, it would be a new experience for me. Maybe I'm letting it go, yes. But let's watch this break here from Jeffrey. We got the one ball a little bit short. And the cue ball down in the lower area while the two ball is up there. So not so good of a result, of course, but the Ping Chung, well, I guess it's doubtful that he can do much out of that except the safety. I know managers of football teams nowadays, so much of it is about looking at the opposition and particular players and their strengths and weaknesses and then trying to get their own players to capitalize on those and work around them. So is that something you do at all? Do you look at the American players and see is there anything that maybe you can suggest to your own players about how to cope with them? Well, it's interesting if you look for, it's always hard nowadays um, to find any weakness of some player, right? Because they are so close to perfect, perfectiveness, right? Perfection. So um, how can you find any weakness, right? So you have to watch or you have to look into their match history. If there is some opponent maybe they always have kind of a problem with. What kind of prob uh, opponents they have a hard time to deal with? And what is this opponent doing 
how does it look how does it act right and there maybe you can find some little weakness nowadays but it's nowadays only small weaknesses right nothing really big but still you have to go for the details just to increase your chances just to beat the percentages here and one thing I always find fascinating in tournaments like this in any sport is when the captains have to put together pairings for the mm. doubles matches. So how do you approach that? Because there are a number of ways of looking at it. Some people think you could, should put together players who play in a similar style. And then mm -hmm. there's the school of thought that, well, actually, let's have players with different styles and maybe they can complement each other. And other people take into account things like whether the players have a particularly good friendship between them. So what's your approach to all of that? Is it all of those things? <laughs> yeah, you have to take everything into consideration, but um, mainly I look also on their ex double experiences. Do they have experiences like at the World Cup of Pool, right? We had a pretty successful uh, double with uh, Joshua Filler and Moritz Neuhausen, but also we had a successful uh, double the years before with uh, Franz FSR and um, Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda. And you've got Ocean and he, of course, if they both yes. found themselves in the team, all their history. Absolutely, they are very interesting double uh, double pairs, and yeah, maybe I will try to uh, complete one of these very experienced double. But I wouldn't mind to go also for a new double, maybe. Po Ping Chung back at the table, looking for a 4-1 lead. Well, it's been, I don't know, maybe about six weeks now since you were appointed as captain, and we're getting closer and closer. So as the 6th of December moves into view, Ralph, do you find yourself getting more and more excited about it, or is it a case that the nerves are building, or is it a bit of all of those things? I'm really looking forward to that. You know, of course, the nurse will be a part, and, uh, but the excitement is also there. Maybe I'm the first Moscone Cup captain who walks into the training area and asks the players, OK, I need some coaching here, because all <laughs> of you have more experience with this case than I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ko Ping Chung has made the 3-9 combination there. Well, you could be a sort of a Jose Mourinho type figure, someone who didn't have perhaps the most illustrious playing career, but finds your strength as a coach and leads the European team to victory. We look forward to seeing it and thanks very much for dropping in to have a chat with us today, Ralph. And Jeremy Jones is going to step back in now and join us for the rest of the match. Thanks so much All for right. your company, Ralph. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks for having me and enjoy the next, uh, rest of the match. Ralf Eckert, European Moscone Cup captain. And from one to the other, because it's his American counterpart, Jeremy Jones, who rejoins us now. Chang Yong Lin, over on table two, is looking to draw level here. With the five time winner, Shane Van Boning. You had a bit of pasta there uh, with your wife, JJ. I know the Ryder Cup is on in Italy this week, so you're getting in the Italian spirit with your choice of food. Yeah, well, a few of the Americans said it's been pretty sporty out there, that venue pasta. So me and my wife split it, and they were right. It was really good. And a lot of high quality on table two, and it looks the same on table one for the most part. Yeah, Ko Ping Chung leading 4-1. Not his best hit on the one there. You could see a lot of balls didn't make it up table, and usually means a little off with the hit on the one. Big nine ball for Chang to tie it at five apiece. Yeah, well, we always suspect that this one was going to be very closely matched, and certainly turning out that way so far. Five all there back here. Jeff DeLuna looking to get back to two behind. I don't know if you saw much of the Francisco Sanchez Ruiz match there, JJ, but he was 7 2 down. He was one shot away from going 8 2 behind and turned it round to win 10 9, had the help of a real outrageous stroke of good fortune towards the end. That is going to be a match that's going to be so hard for Mickey Kraus to put behind him now. Yeah, you say that, but I mean, and it is. I mean, essentially, it'd be hard for any of us, but certain types of mentalities will take it better. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hopefully, Mickey looks at how he played this event. I know a couple of them he'd like to have finished better, but 
but he's really starting to evolve into the player we think he could and can be. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of hearts broken in this room uh, this week, but uh, it's all worth it. We've been talking about him in those terms for a while, haven't we, as a player of potential. And that was such a big opportunity for him to get a landmark win. He may not play a name as big as that in a big event for a long time again, so it's so hard to take that the opportunity has passed him by. But as you say, got to move on with his career. FSR moves on in the US Open, and he'll play Daniel Massiol later today in the last 32. That's the round we're watching here. And Jeff DeLuna is trying to get back to 4-2 behind. Yeah, uh, this is a little bit of a mistake on an easy situation to land near the rail, kind of straight with a, a odd six ball near the nine. And really was a cupcake four ball to not only get off the rail, but gather a much easier angle to move the cue ball. We've seen it all week. Once you start to get a little out of line, it seems to compound uh, a shot after shot. So, Jeffrey, and you talked about talent. Oh, my goodness. Not sure there's many more talented than Jeffrey DeLuna on the planet with a cue in their hand. Yeah, as I said, Asian Games silver medalist all the way back in 2006, and he got to the last 16 of the World Championship that year, the first of a number of good showings in the Worlds. Well, we always knew the power was there. Let's see how the speed control, he's gonna love that. But you could see it was pretty dicey up until the last couple inches of the roll of the cue ball. And the players always have talked about Jeffrey that, you know, once he gets that mental game a little more straight, a little more in hand, or let's say a little more day to day uh, with that, that mental game that he's a guy that can really uh, kind of overpower a lot of matches with so much talent. I know also early on in his career he won the Manny Pacquiao International Tournament in Manila. There was a lot of money at stake there. That was a big win for him. Did you play in that? No, I did not. Unfortunately, last time I've been to Manila is when we had the World Nine Ball Championships there. I think the last one won there was by Ronnie Alcano, if I remember correctly. He kind of did what his hero did in 99 in Cardiff. In the round robin stages, uh, Alcano had to beat his opponent eight two or worse to get into the final 64. He beat him eight two, and 64th seat went on to ooh ooh little small one, and that's what I mean about that shot earlier. Not saying the six wasn't, you know, was that hard, but it was just a little odd. Uh, Jeffrey knew it right when he released the cue stick. Oh, feels like that could be a big moment in the match because instead of getting back to two behind, Dalona could find himself trailing 5-1 in a moment. Tell you, I don't know if I try to get straight on this seven. That gets a little flirty. I think I come out and play the cut shot on the seven to go back and forth. That way I have no problems with the nine. Yeah, just like that. No reason to get straight on the seven and take a chance. Just make yourself work a little harder on the next shot. Just to answer your question, it was actually the following year was the last one in the Philippines when Daryl Peach won it. Oh, okay, yeah. He oh, beat seven. Re Roberto Gomez in the final, I believe. Yeah, close one as well. Yeah, Daryl Peach played awesome. He had that kind of soft cut break going, and he just ran a lot of racks every match. A little flat here, so you just got to pay attention. I don't like going with a high ball. You're coming in tight on the nine, maybe more of a stun. Yeah, it's got to go. That has got to go. And now a big decision at a big moment. It's kind of the point of the stun at times. Don't try to control it so much. It's not going to get away from you. It's not really a ball that, that's rotating a lot. So could go for the cross corner bank, trying to leave some distance. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know, you know, with Jeffrey making a mistake, a big mistake, I don't know if I go for this bank or not. I may just chip the nine to the end rail and try, try and get the cue ball up on the top rail. And the problem is, Ko Ping Chung wants to shoot at it and kind of make up for the mistake he had on the position play on the nine. 
Yeah, I think this is the right shot, though. All things considered. And he got the nine near the rail, so it's going to be even harder to judge this bank. And sports is amazing, right? Jeffrey made a huge mistake a moment ago, but if he can bury this nine somehow, it can almost work in his favor. The reprieved man syndrome. That's right. John Mora about to do a little practicing before his final 32 match and probably the most impressive match of the first round. He's having a chat with Ralph Eckert there. Maybe Ralph's trying to find out if John's got any European background. He can work him into his thoughts. Yeah, Jeffrey's got to shoot here. Now, he can shoot it a couple different ways. You want to elevate a little bit if you're going to play it. You could bank the nine to either pocket, trying to swing the cue ball up the table. If you miss it, it may go three rails in the side, or the nine may end up on the opposite end of the table as the cue ball. So if he hits down on it, he's trying to play a little bit of a two-way shot. If he levels out, he's just going for the nine and, and betting the game on that. Okay, he's level, so it's more of a rolling the ball. Wow, what a shot. A bit early to be raising the fist, but you can understand it there. That was a really big moment, and he is indeed a reprieved man there. Instead of going 5-1 down, Jeff DeLuna cuts it to 4-2. He knew well before it got to the pocket exactly where it was going, didn't he? Okay, so 4-2, coping Chung leads. Still a few matches going on in the previous round, including Shane Van Boning, who's now 6-5 down to Chang Young Lin. Emil Andre Gangflo, 7 6 up on Honasuto Camino, and Miguel Silva of Portugal on the hill at 9 5 against Jovan Bustamante. In the last 32, Federal Gorst has won the first rack against Sanyan Pelovanovic. Wow. Someone's hungry. That's yeah, huge meals. Jim and his wife, really good player from the upper northwest. That looks like good. I'm getting hungry now looking at that. Ralph Suke has won the first rack against Chris Reinhold. Suke after that remarkable win over Alban Ocean earlier. From well behind. Alexa Peixelj, 4-2 ahead of Puang Nam Pam. Max Lechner and Oscar Dominguez are 3 all. Mario He and Oliver Shonoki are 4 all. And Alessius Yap has a 2-1 lead over Marco Teutcher. What about that win for Ralph Suke? And... As much as anything, Alvin Ocean really is not having the 2023 he would have hoped for at all or anywhere near it. Yeah, and, you know, once you start to make a few mistakes on tough equipment, they can certainly snowball. And I think that's a rematch, <coughs> excuse me, between Ralph and Chris from the earlier rounds. 4-2 here. Ooh, an awful kiss on the cue ball. It's going to survive staying on the table, but much more difficult shot than what you expected. I'm just talking about Alban Ocean there. I mean, he's been a Moscone Cup regular, has a pretty good record in the tournament in recent years, but you would have to say, at the moment, you would say it's more likely than not he won't be in the European team this year. Well, you know, He's got a big Hanoi open coming up, so that's going to make a big difference. And, you know, he's got a past, past record, but you got a lot of Europeans, just like a lot of Americans over here at the U.S. Open, making some noise. He's a long, long way behind in terms of ground. He has to make up if he's to qualify automatically, Ocean. I think he'd basically have to win in Hanoi, and it's hard to make much of a case from getting a captain's pick at the moment. Yeah, and that's... You know, goes with a little more of what I said a second ago. A lot of other players making their argument and maybe Alvin might not making much of an argument for himself. Big shot. And just as we talked about that big nine ball he banked in, I don't think that hurt him any with that really nice two ball here to open in game seven. Jeff Luna started off with a 9-1 win over Guido Just. Then beat Daniel Massio 9-7. Good win. 
Took on the Lucius Yap in winner's qualification, though, and lost that one 9-7. Since then, he's beaten two very good players and hardly lost a rack along the way. 9-1 against Wong Kwa Kwang in losers qualifying, and then earlier today, 10-2 against Chang Yu Lung, who's just been in the final of that event in Connecticut. He's going to have to play a nice one here. It's, <clears throat> excuse me, a little touchy. Very natural, though, so just the speed control. The only thing you may concern yourself is you want a little angle on the five, but not too much. So that may put the cue ball a little bit over the six here. Maybe 10, 12 inches in front of it. Oh, that bump helped. I kept the cue ball from going another five or six inches. He's got a decent record in the U.S. Open semi-finals in 2019 as I was saying earlier in Las Vegas and he also had a seventh place finish in 2017 it was a slightly different format then when he was in Atlantic City two years ago he was a couple of matches away from the single elimination stage which was only 16 players that year it was the eventual winner Carlo Beato who knocked him out meanwhile he's missed a chance here to close to one behind yeah, and the way the five ball, the stroke on the five ball wasn't the best. It did get down, but you could tell he wasn't in love with it. It kind of lingered and carried over into the green six. Going with a high ball here. Tough shot. Hit it nicely, may catch a piece of the nine. Is the nine going to carry with the cue ball? No, it opened up just enough. And this looked like really perfect pull between Chang Jong Lin and SVB. And of course, always an American fan pulling for him, but good to see Chang Jong Lin. Looks like he has his game back. Really struggled the last two events coming back out to the. World Nine Ball Tour. And with that, Ko Ping Chung restores his three rack advantage. He's halfway to victory now at 5 2. So back to the last 64. Chang Yong Lin at the table looking to go 7 5 up. And Shane Van Boning could be a really big story in the offing there. Seven all now between Hona Suto Camino and Emil Andre Gangflo. And Miguel Silva got to the last 32 of the Spanish Open earlier this year. And the man from Portugal has reached that stage here as well with a 10 5 win over Jovan Bustamante. In the last 32, Sanyan Pelovanovic and Fedor Gorse level up one all. Ralph Suke now 2 0 up on Chris Reinhold. Alexa Peixelge 5 2 up on Puang Nam Pam. Oscar Dominguez has won the seventh rack to lead last year's runner up Max Lechner 4 3. All square between Mario He and Oliver Shonnocky at 4 all. And Alusius Yap, the beaten finalist of 2021, has a 3 1 lead over Marco Teutcher. Now he was the man who sent SVB over to the loser side. Van Boning did get through, but of course, coming through on the loser side, you lose your seeding, and you can find yourself with a very tough draw. It's exactly what's happened. And consequently, Van Boning is in real danger here. Yeah, I didn't see what happened in this game. I did see SVB play a great safety on the three ball, and next thing you know, Cheng's back at the table shooting at the three, so. Take a dead aim.
Concerning times then for the five-time champion. Shane Van Boney is 7-5 down to Chang Young Lin. And just going back to Miguel Silva, who's the latest player to make it into the last 32. His opponent there will be Lee Van Corteza, who's a 10-4 winner. A little earlier against Jesus Atencio of Venezuela. Just looking at Ralph Suquet there, leading Chris Reinhold 2-0. A lot of people have been saying over the last year or so, when Suquet has kept getting through a number of rounds at tournaments, that he could still win a big event. Well, maybe this is as good a chance as any for him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he he's not a player that takes time off. You, you know, he's always exercising, keeping himself fit, hitting plenty of balls. And, of course, we know the experience and the shot selection, stuff like that's going to be on point. Like I said earlier in the week, if one of these players get that adrenaline going at the right time, they can certainly snap this event off and definitely a former winner and Hall of Famer, Ralph Suquet. In yeah, 2002, he was the champion, beating Alex Pagelion in a close final. 15-13, maybe? Well, they were playing to 13. Oh, 13. The so race. 13 so 11 yeah. then. Yeah, yeah you were absolutely 11. right yeah, in terms games, of the... Yeah. Yeah, that's changed a number of times over the years. Yeah, I was watching that when I left the event early and uh, was watching that one via the computer. Well, in 2002? Yeah. Wow, I didn't realize we'd come that far by then. Yeah, it wasn't a stream, though, I don't think, because 03, my match was on... Direct TV pay per view, the final was. So I can't recall, and it wasn't my computer. Actually, I was in Louisiana watching that, that match. Uh, I believe it was Ray Hansen's had us all set up watching the final of the U.S. Open. Coping Chung was very nearly in the final of the U.S. Open last year. And here he's halfway towards claiming a place in the last 16. It's 5 2. Yeah, SVB up against it a little bit. Chang with a dry break, but no shot for SVB. Watch out, cue ball. It's going to be okay. Yeah, now the cue ball stayed on the table. I won't complain about the way they've fallen. No, and he's going to want to attack as he should, but... This two ball sits very difficult, not only to pocket, but the speed just doesn't agree with easy shape on the three, I don't think anyways. So what he's looking at now is how far can I go coming two rails across? Because that's a little more comfortable way to try and pocket this two ball. It's a confident stroke there. Really clean. Started his campaign with a 9-1 win over Lawrence Thomason. But then lost his next match to the 2001 champion, Corey Jewell. So had to win three matches on the loser side. And he was a big favorite in all of them. Beat Jeremy Seaman and Ahmed Aldelaimi. Both of them 8-4. Still favorite against Radislav Babica in losers qualifying. But was one rack away from going out of the US Open. And won that 9-8. And then earlier today, 10-8 against Alexander Kazakis, who was in the quarterfinals here 12 months ago. Yeah, Babika, who was really kind of the leader of that Poland contingent, or Polish contingent, excuse me, but uh, a guy who's also been getting his game back, making a little deeper runs, a lot of quality wins. Is it Babika or Babicha? Because I've heard both. I've always just said Babika, and of course I haven't said it to him, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, played him many times, and just a super nice guy like the rest of the the, the Polish players, and and he's kind of deceiving, you know, like when you watch him play, you don't feel like he's going to get out, and he just keeps getting out. Tough shot here. Like to kill the ball for the four on the side, but I don't know if he can do that. So if he has to come out for the corner, this is really kind of. He really took a chance there, but it was worth it. 
he gets above the four, he's got to play the four and go into the seven nine with the cue ball. So really good decision, even better execution. For me, it's always the clincher. You just ask the player and say, how exactly do we say your name? And I've been meaning to do that for some time. I remember being at the Open Golf Championship many years ago when Louis Westhazen won us at a canter. And obviously we all realized, okay, it's about time we finally established what his name actually is. And it turned out everyone was wrong with how they've been pronouncing it. It is Westhazen. I'd have to see the spelling, and I'm not so sure of the golfer, but... Louis West, well, oh, 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 who stays? Yeah, yeah, but it's not apparently. That's yeah. what every, everyone oh, wow. was getting it wrong. Oh, okay, okay. So we said to him, what, what, well, how do you so say it? So it's like with a W? Yeah. In fact, I was actually in my scripts for the rest of that week, writing it with a W to make sure I got it right. So. Wow. And how long ago was this? That was 2010 when oh, okay. we won it at St. Andrews. Oh, you're talking about when he won the Open. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So uh, We just call him Shrek. That's all we call him back home. Uh, he kind of favors Shrek to me a little bit. <laughs> Just a facial, you know, kind of like in a good way. Yeah. I love Shrek. Anyway, Shrek's got a heck of a golf swing, I'll tell you that. One of the best there ever has been. You don't mean the actual Shrek? You no, I mean the player himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really yeah. good player. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to clear up the Babica, Babicha situation. I've heard both, you're right. Meanwhile, no question about the pronunciation of this name. At least not as far as we know. It's Ko Ping Chung, and he's about to go four clear for the first time in the match. And overall, he's looking in pretty good form. Yeah, nice shot there. Just a little subtle hold of the cue ball. And it does indeed go to 6-2. Let's get over to table two and the big story going on there. Chang Young Lin has got a 7-5 lead over Shane Van Boning, the five-time US Open winner. Van Boning has just stroked in the one from distance and managed to slip past the nine to get on the two in the side pocket. Yeah, position on the three, not easy though. This angle's taking him towards the eight. And all this congestion with the eight and six and Trying to come back down table. I'm not really sure how he's going to play this. If he tries to like stun by the eight between the six and eight, he may go towards that left side pocket. I don't know. He's looking to go to the side rail, but can he really cheat the pocket enough on the two to get the cue ball to the side rail and then come, you know, between the 8-6 off the second rail, that being the top rail. I think this is touchy here. Boning was beaten at this stage last year by Alex Kazakis. He's trying to complete what would have been a dream year, given that he's won his first world nine ball earlier in 2022. It was one so-so break from Ko Ping Chung, but it's been lights out on that end since. That's the shot I was talking about. Is it going to open up enough? Yes, it did. And I'll tell you what, that was a big gamble playing a great player trailing 7-5. to five. And if he doesn't get there on that shot, it could be curtains. Well, I was told it is Babitza. Like a TSA. But pizza. So pizza, that's, uh, pizza. that's actually different to then either of the yeah, things. That's, and yeah. that's exactly what uh, the message I got. So. Which I think I've heard that also, to be fair. So. All right, big shot here for Ko Ping Chung. Similar to the two he had on the. Oh, he didn't know. He didn't think he got it down. He thought he overcut it. Now, one good thing for Shane in this match, he's, he was down 3-0 with not much of a chance to start this match, so he's already pulled back a couple times. So he's not going to look at 7-5 to five as anything different. Nowhere near as far behind as Sanchez Ruiz was, but could be a case that we see the numbers 1 and 2 in the world, both winning in this round with fight backs. Okay, got a little flat on the six, so he's got to make a decision. 
I don't think he can hit like a high right English and check the cue ball easily to come back for the seven. I think top inside is a little touchy as well. They come in two rails by the eight using the right side. Okay, he was able to get enough right English. Okay, Koping Chung in perfect position. Just come to the center of the table. Trying to get that nice little natural angle off the six to get back upstairs on the seven. Continuing on his merry way on the main table. Really the way he's been playing, it would be astonishing if it isn't 7 2 in a moment. Yeah, as it should be, but he did get a little off angle here. He wanted to be not so thin. So he's got to make a decision. Do I check the cue ball a little bit? Do I run with it? Looks like he's going to check it. So it's all about the speed. Trim looks to be in control of his game. Shane Van Boning with the nine to get back to one behind. He now trails Chang at Young Lin 7 6. And Ko Ping Chung has this routine nine to lead Jeff DeLuna 7 2. Well, we certainly didn't look at this match and expect a landslide. We may not yet have one, but it's heading that way at the moment. So apart from the SVB match, there's only one other contest still going on in the last 64. And at the moment, it's heading the way of Hona Suto Camino. Who is uh, finishing very strongly there and now leads Emil Andre Gangflo by nine racks to seven. In the last 32, Federal Gors 2-1 up on Sanyan Pelovanovic. Chris Reinhold has finally got one on the board, but he's 3-1 down to Ralph Suke. Huang Nam Pam has pegged it back to 5-3 behind against Alexa Peixelge. Oscar Dominguez 4-3 up on Max Lechner. Mario He just ahead of Oliver Shonoki at 6-5. And Alusius Yap has a 4-2 lead over Marco Teutcher. The players whose names are a bit less familiar are those taking part in the SVB Junior event. And we'll be focusing a bit more on that tomorrow as it moves towards its conclusion. And well, SVB himself over on table two. It's broken dry in rack 14, and I think he's left a shot at the one, JJ. Yeah, he sure has. So back-to-back -back dry breaks, one from Chang, where Shane had to push out, kind of fight for the shot. He got it done, but now a dry break that looks like it's going to serve up a pretty good starter. Not an easy out. You can see the 3-6. And if you want to see more of this, go to your... Matchroom multi sport YouTube channel. You can see all the action on table two. And we'll keep dipping in on it as well. And uh, you know, this could be a bit delicate. Yeah, better to just let the referee do that. You may have to mark the cue ball or the nine, most likely the cue ball. Did replace the rack or, excuse me, take it away. I've never actually held one of those racking devices. It's amazing when you do. You can't believe anything can be as thin as that and still even be there. Yeah, it's really kind of like, it feels like a feather, really, how light it is. And it does a lot of work, though, just like these players. And I'll tell you, a guy we haven't talked a lot about is Filler, right? I mean, we just... I'm sure we're going to see him soon, but he cruised in his first one. That's it. We don't often find ourselves talking about filler in the early rounds because he normally just breezes through them without a bother. Yeah, we're starting to get down there, though. And, you know, filler, even though he doesn't show it that much, you know, he wants this title again. And so nerves will be moving. But it's so impressive knowing he's nervous and he still plays so great. He's got a tough one next against Mark Boisterbosch, the Spanish Open runner-up who won that dramatic match earlier today against Moritz Neuhausen, Filler's great friend and World Cup final partner. Man, I'll tell you, it's been a stellar match from what I've seen between Chang and SVB, and Chang very, very prepared. Okay, I 
think on table number one, we're going to see a push out here from Ko Ping Chung. Delicate little shot from Ch Chang Jung Lin. He's got to come two rails, get in position on the three for the upper corner. That's on the right screen. Looks like the speed's going to be like perfect. Really good. Improve and know how to win no matter what level you're at. Take a little piece from what's going on in the practice table. Tyler Steyer just got eliminated. He's over there practicing the break, getting ready for Vietnam. Yeah, Mark Bolster Bosch on the adjoining table ahead of that match against Filler. And Jeffrey's just kind of lost it uh, since that miss. The six ball, I believe it was. Yeah, that's right. Having played a good shot to give himself a chance at it. Yeah, and Chang Jung Lin in perfect line now, getting through the hard part of the rack now. Talked about it all week. You can't take your eye off anything with the equipment we're playing on here at the U.S. Open. Of course, it's a big story if SBB gets beaten. It always is, particularly when he goes out early. But I'm not sure any win for Chang Young Lin can ever really be described as a surprise. He's a player of such immense quality. And he nearly derailed Van Boning's World Championship winning campaign last year. Yeah, and I mean, there's so many great players, of course. But if you asked all the players, I mean, they'd label him a top 10 guy, maybe even top five or six. I mean, he's just that good. Before pandemic, the way he was playing and trending, you just kind of felt like the U.S. Open or one of these really, really major titles it was pretty much inevitable for Chang Jung Lin. Just too good day in, day out. Yeah, he's number 30 in the world rankings at the moment, but like a lot of players, I think that says more about just a lack of participation in events and it's a ranking that I'm fairly sure is going to change dramatically as he becomes a regular presence on the World Nine Ball Tour again. Another Chinese Taipei player and Ko Ping Chong getting it done. He's overran his mark there, but he seems to be doing everything he needs to keep that lead over very dangerous Jeffrey DeLuna, even with a five-game lead. He's not a slow player, Chang Hyung Lin, I wouldn't say. I'd describe him as measured. It's like he weighs up the shot, considers everything, and he just always seems to know when's exactly the right moment to pull the trigger. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, sometimes you, it, it fools you on that because he kind of, he doesn't move around the table too fast. He just kind of takes his time around there and but yeah he sees things quickly he just kind of making sure he's not making some silly mistake and his process that's his process and that's one thing I'd say about him I don't know if you would agree he very rarely does make silly mistakes when he misses a ball it tends to be one that you thought there was a chance of him missing in the first place well the one that we used to always talk about as far as running the racks and, and percentage plays was Buddy Hall and of course he backed it up with incredible execution and a two-time winner. This one's going to go a little hard, though. He may have a little bit of a shot on the nine. But we always said he's he's the Buddy Hall from the other side of the planet <laughs> when it comes to the cue ball control and really just smart decisions running running racks. And you've said it all week about lesser shots. They are missable here at the U.S. Open. Ko Ping Chung isn't missing much of any description here. Jeff DeLuna would have been expected to give a much closer contest. Ko Ping Chung totally dominant at 8-2. Big moment here, this to go 8-6. And within one of the hill. Ko 
Chang Yun Lin does indeed lead Shane Van Boning by two. And here's the dream of the happy half dozen of US Open titles slipping away for another year for Shane Van Boning. Still time for him to turn that round. Not so sure that's the case for Jeff DeLuna. It doesn't look like he's in the sort of form to turn a match around, but well, they're still out there. There's still an opportunity. Honasuno Camino, Suto Camino rather, is 9-7 up on Emil Andre Gangflow in the last 64. Last 32 matches, two all now. Pelovanovic and Gorst, Ralph Suke, 4-1 up on Chris Reinhold. Pong Nam Pam has got it back to 5-4 behind now against Alexa Peixelj. Max Lechner and Oscar Dominguez are 4-all. Mario He 6-5 up on Oliver Shalnocki. And Lucius Yap has a 5-2 lead over Marco Teutcher. Gerson Martinez and David Alcady are just starting out their match on table four. We go back to table one. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Jeffrey's still getting punished for that mistake. All from great play from Ko Ping Chung, but now a dry break. He can see the one, but it lands on top of the pink four. So Jeffrey's got to remain calm here and just start to try and win a game. You got to try and win that first game, get that first shot and see what happens. Not so sure of a safety from here, really. Uh, could try to edge the ball, but boy, you're going to leave a very easy doable kick and you could easily sell out some type of straight in shot or some type of offensive shot at the one. Another drive. Oh, no, nope. the eight went down, so Chang will be at the table. That's on table two, excuse me. Yeah, he's got a chance at the one here, looking to get to the hill against Shane Van Boning. I was going to say he may push out Jeffrey DeLuna, just didn't really see much. I'm not sure what he's going to play from here other than maybe chipping off the side of the one and running the cue ball. Chain could cut this in and he may think about it for a moment, but I, I kind of feel like he'll play a safety change on then. That's another thing about him as well, I would feel. I've watched him over the years that he always knows when's the right time to attack and when to defend those calls very well yeah when you hit a lot of balls right and it has purpose you start to figure thing out, things out percentage wise and of course matches he's played so many matches through the years surprised he's considering the cut shot to be fair I mean it's an awful hard stretch he could bank the one up like he's looking at now and kill the cue ball behind the three it's not terrible will change a little bit when it comes to that final 16. We'll only play on three tables and of course the shot clock will be involved. Still have to play great pool but you're just going to have to speed it up a little bit. see the workings in his brain going on there. He seemed to gradually lose interest in the chance of cutting in the one. He looks to have played that pretty well. I mean, he's a tall man, but it was way down there. I think if he could have reached it a little more comfortably, he may have attacked. Because he knows how great Shane is, even if he is snooker. Oh, there it is. He flips the seven in. 
gets a chance at the one. Yeah, a tough one, but definitely a chance. Oh, a missed kick there from Ko Ping Chung. So ball in hand to get Jeffrey started. Well, he's got to get started now, hasn't he? If he doesn't make something of this, I would feel it's as good as over. Tell you what isn't over is the match between Hona Suto Camino and Emil Andre Gangflo because the youngster from Norway has just won the 17th rack to get it back to just one behind at 9 8. That's one of two remaining matches in the last 64. The other one being the match going on on table two where Shane Van Boney is battling to get back to one adrift. He just pured that one ball. Still got a tricky out. You can see the pink four and the nine on the left side rail. I'll tell you what, pretty impressive from Sudo. He was trailing most of that match. Yeah, and he came from nowhere yeah, to get yeah. the lead. Really turned it round. Now it's getting Flo's turn to do the chasing. The winner of that will play Jason Shaw, the 2017 champion. He beat Earl Strickland 10-3 on the main table earlier. Okay, big decisions for SVB. Does he roll this in with a flick of outside, just staying above the side for the purple? That's the you know kind of prudent play. But it is touchy. Oh, real nice. But he's still going to have to come with one here from some distance. Jeffrey DeLuna was knocked out of this championship by Carlo Beato. The year Beato went on to win the title, 2021. A pair of them together, though, have been to the final of the World Cup of Pool. A couple of years before that, they beat the Czech Republic only just in the first round, 7-6, and then saw off Albania, Canada, the Netherlands, and then played Austria in the final, but were heavily beaten, and so missed the chance for the Philippines to claim that record-breaking fourth at World Cup of Pool title, although of course they've since taken care of that with a different pairing in Spain this summer. Yeah, what an incredible World Cup that was. Shane Van Boney has been a World Cup winner in the past. He's won this tournament five times and he's still in with a chance of making it six. He's back to one behind there at 8-7. Yeah, huge rack, and again, that's why Chang really contemplated cutting that one in because he knows safety's early. These players know safety's early in the rack. You know, it's easy for the player to kick save, jump save. There, he jumped, took a chance at making the seven, got it down, and made a heck of it out behind it. And with the winter break format, that's where you, you know, you're on the fence sometimes with decisions because you know things can start to compile behind it. Jeff DeLuna really had to win this rack. And it looks as though he's going to, but it's still a long, long road back from here. And that makes it 8-3. thus ending Ko Ping Chung's run of four straight racks prior to that. So elsewhere in the last 32, Robbie Capito has won the first rack against John Mora. Sanjin Pelovanovic now ahead of Fedor Gorst at 3-2. Ralph Suke has stretched it out to 5-1 over Chris Reinhold. Alexa Peixelge getting to 6-4 up on Pong Nam Pam. Skylar Woodward has taken the first rack against Naoki Oi. Oscar Dominguez and Max Lechner are level at 4 all. Gerson Martinez of Peru has won the first against David Alcady. 6 all between Mario He and Oliver Sholnocki. And Alusius Yap is pulling away from Marco Teutcher. It's 6-2 there. Now I wonder, can we see table 2 again? I think you were watching the start of rack 16 there. What can you tell us, JJ? Yeah, he broke the balls great. Looked like he, cue ball kissed the two. Looked like he was going to get an easy shot. Now he really has no offensive shot. Van Boning, that is. 8-7 down against that, Chang Young Lin. That's right. And a real awkward situation for Shane, even though he's close to the two. We'll leave that one for a moment. 
see if Jeffrey DeLuna can put something together to get back in this match. SVB tried to play a safety and I don't think he got there. Jump of anxiety there from DeLuna as he saw the cue ball getting dangerously close to the side pocket. It's stayed above ground. He does have a chance at the two here, but it's tough. Yeah, tough shot, tough to get position besides rolling it. Not your most favorable, favorable way to shoot a shot from distance, especially for the top players. I don't think there's a choice really, though. Unless he sees a safety he likes, but certainly not pushing out. I think he's got to roll this, Michael. I don't, I mean, he's got all the power in the world, more than any player on the planet probably, but the angle just not there to move the ball. He's playing safe. He should have known the kiss was going to be there. SVB safety on the two did not work. Change on Lynn, knock the two in, and it's on the three to try and get to the heel. just played a good shot in the sense that he's made the pot and got on the four. And he's going to have awkward bridging over the seven. The cue ball's pretty close to it. Yeah, nice angle though, and he doesn't have to work the cue ball much to go between the six, eight to get on the five. Now Jeffrey, I think all he really has here is a two rail kick to where he tries to come in behind it. and then come across it to where you can separate the two and the cue ball. Play this a few different ways, just kind of what you're feeling, what you feel like you're going to be accurate or, or able to execute. Yeah, this is the shot I was talking about with Chang Young Lin. He said he didn't have a huge amount to do, so that made the awkward bridging less of a factor. Yeah, if he had to move the cue ball very, very much at all, that makes it missable. Got to power up a little bit here to get out with the cue ball for the green six. Got such a good stroke, though, and he gets so much out of the cue ball, you won't, it won't be blast off here on the five, but like a medium firm. So Ko Ping Chung back at the table and very much in control of proceedings. Looking to continue what's been a pretty memorable few months for Asian players. Ko Ping Yi winning the World Masters. Dang Jin Hu returning to the world stage and sensationally winning the Spanish Open and Philippines winning the World Cup, as we were saying. Yeah, 
and didn't get the cue ball out as far as he wanted on the six. He's going to deal with it, but he's got to work the cue ball whether he's going to kill it, maybe go a little distance to, to, to cut the seven. We'll see. I think he's going to float this with a lot of right English. Maybe. That match between Onasuto Camino and Emil Andre Gangflow has now gone hill hill. Swung one way and the other, and they're going to come down to one rack. Which gang flow will have the break. All right, we'll see the touch of Chang Jung Lin here on the six. He decided to come out, and I was wondering about this. Not saying he's bad, but now he's going to have to turn the cue ball loose a little bit on a thin seven. And I don't think he'll miss, but he could get a little tough on the eight to get over for the nine, so we'll see. Straightforward for Ko Ping Chung from here. Overall, I think he's going to reflect on this as a very accomplished performance. Wow. Moments anxiety there for Chang Young Lin for sure, but the seven has dropped. Flicked off the eight, and he's nicely on us. Yeah, and he flicked off of it with just a you know, touch of an angle that'll carry him, or should carry him, a little closer to the nine. Speaking of nine, that's the number Ko Ping Chung has now arrived at. He's half a dozen racks clear once again. Dr. Luna is going to have to win seven in a row to stay in the US Open. Back to table two. he would end up a little closer because I mean Chang will be aggressive with the cue ball if he likes it. You know, maybe the tighter pockets made him play this a, you know, a little simpler accepting the shot on the nine. against Chang Yong Lin in the 2016 final that Shane Van Boning tied the all-time record of five US Open titles. The same opponent could end his hopes for this year of getting to number six. Chang Yong Lin on the hill at 9-7. Ping Chung also on the hill, but in very different circumstances. He's got a huge lead. Just needs one more to see off Jeff DeLuna. Yeah, he's really broke the balls nicely, making the one in the side. Only had one break that I thought was just kind of so-so. All the rest have been pretty on point. And now a shot at the blue two to get started. with his last break in this match at 9-7 to seven over Shane.
Oh! Well, whenever I make that sound, it means the nine is threatening to fall in somewhere, but uh, it hasn't dropped. Now, has he got a shot on the two, Chang Young Lin? Well, I'll tell you, if he's got any piece of the two, it looks like he, he could play it off the three, even if he's a little thin, maybe. I think he may be able to play this off the off the three. Otherwise, he'll play the kick shot, I think, trying to kick safe. What's going on over on table two? We'll keep you posted. And, of course, if that's still going when this one finishes, we'll be straight over there. This may be a fun shot to watch here from Ko Ping Chung. Kind of wrap the corner going around the six and eight, dropping. Well, I don't know. He's queuing awfully down here. Maybe just trying to draw over and get a cut shot on the pink four. Well, should be okay. He's going to have to gamble a little bit on this shot. Probably goes into the brown seven. He does finish the job. He could be back here tomorrow to play the 2019 champion, Joshua Filler. Although Mark Beisterbosch stands in Filler's way. Now, Yuki Oi has just won the third rack to lead Skylar Woodward 2 1. Lucius Yap closing in on victory, it seems. 8 2 now against Marco Teutcher. And Alexa Peychelge, two away from victory. 8 5 against Quang Nam Pam. All right, big shot here for Ko Ping Chung. Makes this. Doesn't he, I think he wants to go into the brown. With the awkward cueing, that may keep him off of any side spin. I think he needs a hair of right English. If no English, he may catch the seventh thin and go up table or not hit it at all. Yeah, there you go. Really confident stroke. Just one other update to give from this round. A lot of people have been saying Federal Gorst could really re-announce himself on the World Nine Ball Tour with a big title here this week, but he's 5-2 down to Sanyan Pelovanovic. Gorst has only just returned in recent months after missing a lot of events due to travel issues and so on. And Honosuto Camino has finally got over the line. Emil Andre Gangflo did so well to take it to Hill Hill, but Camino has won at 10-9. And will now play Jason Shaw in the last 32. Ko Ping Chung here, looking to move into the last 16. Well, I don't know if he has a pocket for the five. And speaking of that match with Feder Gorse and Sanjin, Sanjin showed us at the PLP these big names, you know, when he believes in himself and his game's on point, he, he's not going to slow down. And he's shown us that all, all week. All right, going for this thin cut in the side, I think. Going to let the cue ball really just go up and down the table. Well, he played it light. Surprising to me. I thought he would go ahead and sh put a lot of speed on that, making the cut a little cleaner. Chang Young Lin played a safety on that two that we were talking about. Gamboning has replied. It's hard to tell whether the two's been left on. What do you think, JJ? Does that go? Is there room? Uh, my guess would two? be no. Yeah. I wish I'd have seen the exchange between the two. Not an easy safety, though. Nothing easy for Chang here. He may have to cut the two into the purple and try and track the cue ball two rails up behind the eight. Not the you know, most settling shot to shoot at, knowing you got one ball to get behind, and if you don't, you're leaving SVB a shot. I think this landed right on the 50 here. Cut in the side or the corner, very difficult. That being Jeffrey DeLuna's shot on the five. Yeah, Chang, I don't think he really has a choice but to come off his right side of the two. Not really sure what else he's going to do. Oh, wow, it did go. Yeah, and he's potted it, and he's landed nicely on the three. It's a big chance for Chang Young Lin to knock Shane Van Boning out of the U.S. Open. Yeah, and they're set up nicely. The three's okay. The four's near. The five, six. <clears throat> the seven, eight, nine up the table, grouped together.
Now, is there a problem here? Is he, if he draws the ball, is, is he going to catch a piece of the pink, that being Chang? It's the only thing I can imagine slowing him down here. Win for Camino means this is the only match still going in the last 64. Cheat it, play the three to the top side of the pocket. Surely fearing the worst now, knowing how efficient Chang Yong Lin is in situations like this. Yeah, it's no more position to be played. It's just knocking in four shots, really. He's in a great position on the first one. He's not going to back off, though. I'm sure he'll put this in with a little speed to get the cue ball off the rail. The shot finally. Two players on the hill on adjoining tables here, but in totally different situations. Ko Ping Chung in control. Firmly ahead. This one has been close for most of the way. Chang Yong Lin got off to a good start. Finishing strongly as well. Good pop from De Luna. Is it all going to finish for him? Pretty good, it seems. Well, Earl Strickland has gone out of the US Open today, but his share of the record for most US Open titles won will remain intact for at least another 12 months because for the second year in a row, Shane Van Boning has been beaten in the last 64 of the US Open. Chang Yong Lin goes through, winning by 10 racks to 7. Biggest story of the event so far, JJ. Yeah, absolutely. It was the biggest story coming in. Maybe FSR's title defense was right up there with it, but it is the U.S. Open, and I think the greatest American player that's ever played, and you know, we can always argue about the greatest of all time, is now out of the event. Chang Young Lin. We have another match to play today against Viktor Zielinski of Poland for a place in tomorrow's last 16. Jeff DeLuna still has ambitions of being there as well. Well, I've never seen Jeffrey hit one righty. I've seen him behind the back and with the bridge, but never. Oh, my. And that's what I mean. I've never seen it once. Well, maybe he shouldn't do it again if it's going to go like that. And that is a pretty ignominious way to go out of the U.S. Open. And it looks as though that's what's going to happen now. And obviously a miscue off the bottom right part of the cue ball. And Ko Ping Chung, who seems like he's just been trying to survive every match. He's been up against it. Now a comfortable win, but with a lot of work done, just like his uh, countrymen against SVB. I understand, by the way, the next match on the main table is going to be the 2021 champion, Carlo Biado, who is one rack away from getting to the final in defense of his title last year. 
up against Mieszko Fortunski. You know, Fortunski, a guy we talked about a lot through the years. We kind of haven't talked about him as much. You know, kind of wondering when that, that big finish is coming, and he's in form. We've come to the finish of this match, and Ko Ping Chung is the first player through to the last 16 of this year's US Open. He's defeated Jeff DeLuna in a surprisingly one-sided match by 10 racks to 3.